Pastor Amos Oringo is my name. Privileged to be the founder and the general of of Believers Faith Embassy based in Tika. And uh, I said I'm married. I'm a father of five children and a grandfather of five grandchildren too. <laughs> Hallelujah. Above that, I'm born again and Jesus is Lord. I'm so grateful to God to allow me to have come this place. I just want to thank God for his servant and his wife and the entire leadership of this church for allowing me to stand on this exalted altar to fellowship and share with us the word of God. It's been a wonderful time to be here from Wednesday evening and Thursday and Friday and even yesterday and even this morning. The Lord bless you all who have been able to come and the voice of my, sound of my voice and the grace available on this altar. God bless you in Jesus' name. Hallelujah. I say hallelujah. Uh, it's, I'm on duty by the grace of God, and I believe God, by the time we are done, the, the assignment will be well done in Jesus' precious name. The theme that we have been uh, sharing together is radiating his glory uh, through giving. Radiating the glory of God and through giving. And uh, I didn't know that was the theme for, that his glory was the theme for the year for all of us, picked from the book of Isaiah, chapter 16, verse 1. The Bible says, Arise, shine, for thy light is come, and the glory of the Lord is risen upon thee. Hallelujah. I say hallelujah. Amen. That word is loaded. It says, Arise. That is the only way you can shine. If you remain sitting, or sleepy, spiritually asleep, and spiritually seated, the shine will not be there. Hallelujah. And no matter how much light and glory is around you, when you remain closing your eyes, sleepy and drowsy, you cannot see much. And then let us remind ourselves that the shine is not general, it's a personal shine. Hallelujah. Would you allow me, therefore, to ask us to say, I will shine my shine. And you will shine your shine. Tell your neighbor for me, you will shine your shine. And I will shine my shine. And everybody will shine their shine. Hallelujah. The stars in the sky at night shine each individual's shine. They keep their own position. They don't look for who is shining and who is not shining. You just shine your shine. And that is expected of us also. But look at what makes shining possible. The Bible says, for thy light is come. Hallelujah. It's a reminder that the light has come. And in our context, the light here talks about the light of the scriptures. Glory to God. The Bible says in the book of John chapter 1, that in the beginning was the word, and that word became the light of man. Hallelujah. And so the glory that the Bible talks about, which is the theme for us this year, will not be relevant to us if we don't appreciate John chapter 1, where the Bible says, in the beginning was the Word, and the Word was with God, and the Word was God. The same was in the beginning with God. All things were made by Him, and without Him was not anything made that was made. The Word was not just a thing, but it was a personality, a person. In Him was life, and the life was the light of man. Hallelujah. The light shined in darkness, and the darkness comprehended it not. Glory to God. And so the word in verse 4 is, in him was, the, was life, and the life was the light of men. So this category and a particular set of people who can, be, who can see the glory because someone can experience this light. Hallelujah. Every glory is subject or is possible by the light in the word. And the light in the word becomes important and relevant when you are born again. He said, this was, he says in verse 4, in him was life. The life you and me receive after you are born again guarantees you ability to access the light that then radiates in your life for you to glory. Hallelujah. And so all that we have been doing and we keep on doing on this assignment of radiating his glory is strictly committed to bring out the light in the scriptures. Hallelujah. Any other shine that is out of scripture is questionable. 
And that is why we all, you know, the word of God puts us together. Regardless of which denomination you come from, which, which, which other background you have, as long as you subscribe to the light of the word, the glory is guaranteed. Praise be to God. Hallelujah. What a wonderful Sunday morning. Uh, pastor was just saying it right. Mary Magdalene on that day, if we, we commemorate properly the resurrection Sunday, she was there at the gravesite of Jesus. And Jesus had risen from the dead. But she is not aware of the light of the scripture, kind of. And she is asking the very person she's looking for, where have you put my master? And she was asking Jesus himself. The Bible says in her tears, she thought he was a gardener. Hallelujah. Glory to God. And that is how tricky it is that you can be right in the center of where you should shine and you are not even aware. Hallelujah. She's asking for the person she's talking to. May you not be in a place where you're supposed to be blessed and you're not aware. At one point, Jacob said, hey, so this was the gate of heaven and I didn't even know. May you know tonight, today, that you are in the right place. This is your place of shine. Everybody in this, in this life who is walking with God has a moment of an encounter with God that makes their life shine with a glory that cannot be shattered or be, be clouded. Anyone among us whom Satan in his wickedness and schemes has covered their glory, I pray by the end of the service, your glory will be uncovered. And you shall shine. In your health, you will shine. In your family life, you will shine. In your marriage, you will shine. In your business, may you shine. In your career, may you shine. In your finances, may you shine. In your relationships, may you shine. Those of us who are in politics, may you shine as well. To the glory of God in Jesus' name. Hallelujah. Praise Jesus. In that resurrection morning, let me tell you the glory of Jesus after resurrection was much more than the glory he carried before he died. Hello and hallelujah. The glory of Jesus after he has resurrected is so great and so awesome. You cannot even compare with what he had before he died. Hallelujah. And that is very important for us to, re to realize. You know, he had walked in the streets of Galilee. Healed us, sick, raised the dead, and cleaned the lepers. And we are all happy about that. But something has now happened. He has to walk on donkeys. He has to be hungry and feed on whatever is available. He has to have guys who, who, who oppose him. And kind of time, the Bible says, he walked away from the jury because they were just about to kill him. And the Holy Ghost tell him, you don't go there. But now he is resurrected. The, the, the chapter we just read now about the women. Can you imagine? He is talking to them here. I tell them, go to Galilee. We'll meet you. You, he's already there. He's, he's in Galilee. He's in Capernaum. He's everywhere. He's in Cleopas' house. He's all over the place. The kind of presence of God he's commanding now. He's super, super. You can't compare to what he was suffering or what was there. But people are marveling about, wow, we've never seen this kind of wisdom. We've never seen anybody raise the dead. We've never, this is super now by the reason of an exaltation that came from heaven. That is why we're here this morning. Let me tell you that that glory is a product of him giving his life. And that is why to look at how glorious it is to give, you need to understand the power of resurrection. In fact, the, the significance of crucifixion. Hallelujah. I said, hallelujah. He gave the highest sacrifice that anybody would ever give at all, at all. He gave. The glory is not for free, even though it has been announced and written on our walls. Hallelujah. Just like Jesus secured his own glory by reason of humility and obedience. And let me tell you, maybe you didn't know. We like reading uh, the book of Philippians chapter 2 and verse 5 to 9. And we just read and we say, okay, maybe me. For a long time I was just reading a, <laughs> and we move on like, a, you know, one good song. But look at the details of that scripture. The Bible says, 
Let his mind be in you, which was also in Christ Jesus, who being in the form of God, thought it not robbery to be equal with God. There's nothing wrong for him to equate himself with God. He was God, and he acted God sometimes. Hallelujah. Quite openly. The ten lepers were cleansed, one returned, and worshipped him. He did not deny. He acted God. There's no mistake, no error about it, despite that he was human at the same time. He was God. Hallelujah. Bible says, but made himself of no reputation and took upon him the form of a servant and was made in the likeness of men. Verse 8, and being found in fashion as a man, he humbled himself and became obedient unto death, even the death of the cross. Hallelujah. We always say, everybody can act obedience. But the one that God will bless is obedience that comes from humility. You know, you, you can... You, you can send me or I can send you to do for me something. Go and pick my pen or my Bible from my car. And you want a pastor with my level of this and the other. How can you send me? But you still go. But there's in your heart this rebellion, grumbling and murmuring and complaining. That kind that and God seeing, a man may not see. But the one that God sees in or inside of you denies you the blessing. Every act of obedience secures blessings, but the only one that is based on humility. And just say, learn of me, for I am meek and lowly of heart, and you shall be anointed to lift everybody from your life. In this particular case, the Bible says, look at it. He was obedient and died. Hallelujah. After death, not before, is when verse 9 comes in force. And the Bible says, Wherefore God has, God also has highly exalted him and given him a name which is above every other name. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Yes, that is the same attitude you and me ought to have. And that attitude is that it is an attitude of humility and obedience to divine alignment of the will of God. Glory to God. Hallelujah. I said, Hallelujah. He was lifted in position that nobody or anything has ever had. And that is why you now see him flying all over the places. Initially, he was full of the Holy Spirit. And he walked by the fullness of the Holy Ghost in him. But now the glory that is after reception, he is inside the Holy Ghost. The Holy Ghost is no longer inside him. <laughs> Hallelujah. He, the one, that is why he can go to walls. He appears in a place where five people are gathered. And he appears at will. He's with Cleopas now and they are walking. And the Cleopas is asking him, are you the only stranger in Jerusalem? By the way, the thing that happened three days ago, how can you not know about this great man that died? And, and they are now messing us up. And telling us that, can you imagine, he's resurrected. And in fact, they are saying that some have seen him. Are you the only stranger in Jerusalem? Have you not heard about this story now? And they awoke him. And Jesus would act. And he does act even in this church sometime. He they looked like he's passing by. The other person, no, sir. It is evening, it's late. We are not sure about the security in this region. And we don't need you to have a report of any evil against your life. Allow us to go with you to our house. And have a meal and rest. And tomorrow morning, you shall continue with your journey. You stranger in Jerusalem. The only one, for that matter. <laughs> Hallelujah. And they pick up and they go with Jesus. I mean, Jesus accepts, okay, sir. And they go. Why are they are making a wonderful meal like the one we have with Pastor and a few of us here? Glory to God. I should come to his Lord right again. I will pray and fast for 17 days. I shall return back. I can prophesy well in this city. Hallelujah. While they were having a wonderful meal, Jesus changes and proves who he is now. And he blesses it and says, this is my flesh. And this is my blood. Take it now for the covenant has already been effected. A better one than the one that the, 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 the scapegoat of Moses was having. Hallelujah. For he came to fulfill the law of Moses. And that is why we are saying there's no, the, the Bible is not divided into two. The Psalms say, we don't believe in the laws of Moses. We believe in the things of the New Testament. The one that gave the law is the same one that gave the grace. And that is the same God. He's only saying, he made us better than them, those who are there. 
We are better privileged than those ones. But the whole idea that was is that in those days of Moses, repentance was not like the one we do today. We come and say, say after me. Jesus, I'm a sinner, forgive my sins. I turn from the world and the devil and I turn to you from now onwards in Jesus' name, I believe. And you've just followed. And it's so cheap and so easy. And get it. But in those days, first of all, you're, you're poor. You, you owe me Kippur. You have to have a whole day carrying all manner of things as a sacrifice called sin offering. And you come with it to the priest and you make sure you don't forget any detail of the sins you committed from the, for the whole year, in fact. And you come and they put on, by faith. Faith has always been there, by the way. It's not a New Testament issue. And they have to put your sins, go as they speak of your sins. I stole, I fornicated, I lied, I corrupted. I may change the figures in the place that I'm working to get more money for a new car. All of them are going to the goat. And the scapegoat will go and die. And your sins are cleansed for one whole year. Hallelujah. But that did not take away sins. The law gave us an identity. In fact, it was good, by the way. Because the law then differentiated Israel from the rest of the wicked pagan nations. They didn't understand what pleases God. So they don't do anything that pleases God. And number two issue effect of the law was that it may show you what sin is. But it had no power whatsoever to take sin from us. It just shows you it is wrong to, to murder. So you struggle the moment you come, not to, to worship another God. It is wrong to covet. It is sin for you to steal and lie and, uh, and, and slander somebody. But it did not give you any ability whatsoever. So we became slaves under sin. We are, we, you are trying this, you fail. You are trying. But when Jesus died, this is the significance which brought in grace and truth. But now anyone by faith who receives him receives power to have dominion over Satan and sin. Hello? Let nobody confuse about the teaching of faith, of grace. Grace simply means empowerment by believing in Jesus to overcome both Satan and sin. Hallelujah. Praise God. Hallelujah. And so grace does not give me license to sin. I say I'm no longer under the law. I mean, even if you love me and I love you, will you now be sinning against me? You know, now you are my friend, so I can do whatever I like. I can take your car if I like. I can take even your wife if I like. Ah, partner. If you love me, then you must be careful not to hurt me. So you cannot be using grace to disgrace God. And Paul says, if then grace has taken away the place of law to give us a better relationship with God, should we therefore sin because grace has come? And say, God forbid. We have already power to dominate sin. You know, when a sinner and you, you make resolutions of the year, I'll stop sinning, fornicating, lying. And the devil catches you saying those things. To the following day, he will make you drink like a fool. Who told you to say you can't drink, you can't drink? Mm, finna you. When you are born again and you say, Godliness has come unto me, telling me and commanding me to say no to all ungodliness and sin, you can go scot free. I said, Satan, you are too small to cause me to commit sin. And the devil has nothing to do against you. Are we together? Hallelujah. And so Jesus disappears again from the, I mean, he, he, they begin to realize that this is not a stranger. In Jerusalem. This is actually Jesus himself. And you see the guys who are so secure. And talk about security things. And how it is safe just to have you around. And be to sleep here. And to, you can continue. Wow. Nobody ever missed Jesus genuinely. Remains on the same level. The Bible says the same night. The same night. Cleopas and the family and the guys. They went back to Jerusalem. Hey, 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 huh, hey, let me tell you. Hey, it is true. He's resurrected. We have seen him ourselves. I'm telling you the truth. We are together with him. We were surprised. We were talking. 
And even we quote scripture, there's something will be starting up in our hearts. And we don't know what is happening. Before we know it, we see him manifest. And we'll prove to you, he disappeared through the window. I mean, the, the, the roof. We are here as witnesses. Hallelujah. I say hallelujah. The glory of Jesus after resurrection can never be compared with the glory of Jesus before resurrection. What are we talking about, beloved? Hallelujah. The genesis, the foundation, the fundamental forever and ever of such kind of glory is accessible by sacrifice or giving based on love. Hello? Am I talking? Hallelujah. The glory of Jesus is not just that. Uh, hey, hey. Bible says in the book of John 10 and verse 17. But I have the, the, my father loves him for this one thing. I have received a, com I mean, a, a commandment from him that I may lay down my life and pick it up again. Hallelujah. I may do what? Give my life like a seed that I was preaching to you the other day from the book of John 12 and verse 24. That as long as the seed remains alone, it is just a body by itself. It is even weak and vulnerable. We can throw it out. One seed, we can throw it out. We can swallow it. We can play around with it. But the moment it is given into soil, the Bible says it dies. So there's no resurrection and his power and greater glory without a release of a seed to go down and die. Hallelujah. So there's no better glory than the one you carry today if you have no two things, loving God and demonstrating your love for God with giving. Are we talking? Hallelujah. Are we together in this service? There is never. There is never glory. There, le, le, don't think I'm just talking about giving anyway. <laughs> Hallelujah. Giving that is backed with love will always end up in glorify your life. Giving. There is no love that is not demonstrated. One of the ways to demonstrate love is to give unto God by obeying his instructions. Walking in the light of giving scripturally. And doing it with love will culminate into glory. What am I talking about? I'm not talking about uh, adding values. How much offer you give? Read with me the book of 1 Corinthians chapter 13, verse 12 and 13. To know that I'm not just talking about ordinary giving. You just give because it's offering time now. In our church now, uh, what's the time now? Well, they will be talking about it in a few minutes to midday. And they say, giving time... Is honoring time. Like reminding ourselves of Proverbs chapter 3 and verse 9. Honor the Lord with your substance. Hallelujah. Glory to God. It's not just about that. The Bible says that 1 Corinthians 13 and verse 12. Sorry, 2 Corinthians. Hallelujah. Glory to God. I'm looking for you, scripture. Come quickly. My time will be limited. Jesus' name. Hallelujah. Praise God. The Bible talks about our love for God. That when you love him, it's not about what you give in terms of to the poor, to the needy, to the issues of life. But if you don't have love, you are giving is useless. Hallelujah. I say hallelujah. May our giving be authenticated by our love for God. Hallelujah. Do you want, if you are interested in this year's theme for this church, and you are a member of the family of this commission, you must appreciate that your radiation, your glory, your blessing, your lifting, the one that will commit God to your case is the giving that you do in love. Hallelujah. I say hallelujah. 
Bible says, allow me to, verse 3. Verse 2 and 3, not 13, and not 12 and 13. Verse, verse 2 and verse 3 of chapter 13. And though I have the gift of prophecy and understand all mysteries and all knowledge, and though I have all faith so that I could remove mountains and I have not charity, I am nothing. And though I bestow my goods to feed like, I mean, feed the poor, and though I give my body to be burned and have not love or charity, it profited me nothing. It may profit those who are giving, but the kind that will bring resurrection, glory, you, it left your hand, but it never left your life. It went inside your own life, checking for a need that you cannot meet by yourself and organizing it by the heavenly way and bring about a better glory. It must be done by love. Am I talking? Hallelujah. So we didn't come here to populate church uh, accounts. I said, hey, they say we should give more. No, we should love more. We should understand the concept of love, which is the reason why we are alive today. If Jesus is not glorified from the dead, your salvation will not work. Even if you say you want to stop sin, you can't stop. You want to stop the devil, you can't stop. Because it's when his name is exalted. Not before. It is when he is resurrected that the power to church has been given to him and he quickly handed over to us. Hallelujah. I say hallelujah. Any giving that is done like bank business. You want, some people are very interested. They want to do business with God. Lord, you know, I gave 30,000 last Sunday. And the whole of this week, I've, not been, I've been checking. I've not been seeing how things are working. You are a businessman in the house of God. If Jesus catch you, you flog you like he flogged them those days. In my house, they don't do business. They love God. Hello? Hallelujah. You must check your heart. You must check. You are loved to love. It should not be a problem. Hello? Jesus loved me uh, and I have, he has not my debt. He has not given me a new car. It's not my business. He, he loved me so, so much. I can't pay and I can't ask for more. All that I'm struggling, may God help me, is to demonstrate my love for him. Hallelujah. Love is what adds value to your giving. Loving God genuinely is what makes your giving potent. Giving is important without love. You can give everything you have. But if you are giving to show off, they must know. I'm the one here. Nobody gives like me this church. Yeah, you know. <laughs> what would they what would they say about me? Oh. You are love for God. God knows how to check our hearts. Bible says the eyes of the Lord, they run to and fro the whole earth to show himself strong on behalf of them whose hearts are loyal towards him. Loyalty is number one thing you must have. Before God, loyalty. Before you give and before you receive glory from heaven, you must prove and pass the test of loyalty. Loyalty. Those are the people the Bible says in the book of 2 Corinthians chapter 9 and verse 8. Are the ones the Bible says that God loves a cheerful giver. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. This is the way rich people give and Jesus talked about it, not just me. Jesus talked about rich people giving and it has no impact whatsoever. In the book of Luke, Acts, Luke chapter, I mean Mark 14, 41 to 44. And Jesus stood at the place like this. And they say, you know, he has no other knowledge. And he checks, and know, this one, so and so gave. I can see this one, this one gave. This other one, you gave. I said, correct. Let me go again and check this one and know. Have the word of knowledge in me. This one, you are the one who gave. You gave this one. In this one, you are the ones that gave. And there's one widow that gave. And he said he gave two coins. 
which is enough money for one day's job. People who get just what they eat the whole day, the same day. And Jesus said, this woman gave more than the rich people. I said, you wonder, Pastor Jesus, you want your church not to have good instruments like this one? How will you buy if the rich people don't give for this kind of pulpit thing and all manner? Explain to me I'm a pastor like you. And Jesus will tell you, it's not about the things that they bring on the altar. I am about to bless the one who gives out of what is sacrificed because of love. But the rich people give what they can do without. A man with 500 million giving 40,000 a service looks great for the offering. But is it, he can do without 200,000. He can do without 100,000. But he just gave because that is what's available. And I don't reckon with that. Hallelujah. I say hallelujah. But this one has had the gospel. Loves Jesus. Loves the work. And he said, there's no man who has loved me this way and loved the gospel and the ministry. Who will not in this particular life experience the things he has given out of love. And even eternal life. Giving is a mystery that secures every other thing you are looking for, including your eternal life. Anywhere you see people joking with giving, they prove that they have two things. They don't have light of the scriptures and they most likely they don't walk in love. The other day, of course, we know from the book of First Kings in chapter 3. Not even chapter 3. First Chronicles 29 and verse 25. Hallelujah. I say hallelujah. First Chronicles chapter 25, 29, sorry. In verses 25, we meet the story of God, the Holy Ghost speaking about Solomon. And the man was glorified. Like all of us would want to have that kind of thing happen in our lives. The Bible says, and the Lord magnified Solomon exceedingly in the sight of all Israel, be bestowed upon him such royal majesty as had not been on any king before him in Israel. There are only two, King Saul and King David. And God, by the Holy Spirit, talking to you and me, says, this guy received such honor, respect from heaven, backed up by God, that whatever he is, his royalty is exceeding anything you saw in King Saul, anything you saw in the great David in his days. And the reason is, he loved God more than David and more than King Saul. First Kings chapter 3 and verse 3. The Bible says, and Solomon loved the Lord. Hello? And Solomon? And the king went to Gibeah, for it, Gibeon, Mount Gibeon, for it was the place that was, was exalted for uh, people who go there for sacrifice. And he sacrificed unto God 1,000 bulls. Hey! And that giving was like what Noah ever did. God senses love felt giving. Don't be deceived. Nobody's interested about anything. After preaching, I take her. And I will never ask for a coin. I already found out how to get what I need. Hello? We have proved you don't be a con man as a pastor to be well. I don't beg, I don't borrow. Hallelujah. This truth helps my life. Now you see, Solomon, the Bible says, and when God was so moved by the giving of the young man, he now did for Solomon. What men do for God. But instead of Solomon going to have sacrifice, say, Lord, you know, I brought a lot of things for sacrifice today. Will you use this to help me in this governance? No. The man just loves. Hello? He just does what? He loves God. They don't the one they sing and say, We love you, Lord. You, we can sing forever, but that is not enough to demonstrate your love for God. The greatest temptation of your life is in the area of giving. The greatest. And the greatest area of your lifting is in the area of, because it demonstrates genuinely the measure of your sweat, the measure of your thoughts, the measure of every breath in you. Because out of your sweat and all the labor and all the commitment, you wake up in the morning, they constitute and sum up your life. So it's like, you know, your giving represents you before God. That is a product of your life. Your energy. 
You are sitting down. You are thinking. You are meditation. You are work. You are work. You have everything. And God is watching. You just talk. Uh-uh. You demonstrate out of love. And God asks him, what will I do for you? And the man is into business with God. Not things. Business with God. And says, ah, if you only will give me wisdom to govern this your people, I'll be forever grateful. I said, mm, you are not asking for how to deal with your enemies. The one your father told you the other day, I don't know how you are sure you killed them. You are not dealing with the wealth and riches and long life. Hey, this is a good speech. As the Bible says, and the speech pleased God. And God said, even the things you have not asked for, I will give you. Hallelujah. Say, I will give you honor. I will give you riches. And the wisdom of us, I will give you. And my Bible says in the same chapter 4, verse 29 to 33, about there was no man equal to Solomon in his days with his kind of honor, glory by wisdom. Hallelujah. The man was greatly lifted. Lifted completely. Look at 1 Kings chapter 4. Glory to God. I believe somebody will change their way of giving. You have been in that level of disgrace for too long. And you thought they are the demons of your village. It is your heart that has not demonstrated love. Maybe you love God. But you have never demonstrated your love for him. Love is demonstrated. You can give without loving. But genuine love cannot be true. Without giving. Hallelujah. I say hallelujah. The Bible says in the book of First Kings chapter 4. And God, God, and God gave Solomon. Verse 29. Wisdom and understanding. Exceeding much. And largeness of heart. Even as the sun that is on the seashore. And Solomon's wisdom excelled the wisdom of all the children of the east country. And all the wisdom of Egypt. For he was wiser than all men. Than Ethan the Ezra height, and Haman, and Chalcol, and Darda, the son of Mahol. And his fame was in all nations round about. His glory. But don't look at the glory of Solomon and be stuck there. Find out where did Solomon collect all this? By his love for God. Demonstrated by, with his giving. How do you demonstrate your own love? Maybe you... <laughs> Maybe you come to church and say, yeah, yeah. At least God knows I come to church, sir. Mm -hmm. yeah, God knows I come to church. He must mark me right. I came. Maybe I see. And I'm quiet and I'm cool. And I also talk well about the church and the pastor. This is a good church. Is that all that you do? <laughs> My friend, there are levels of giving. There's a level you give and it touches God. There's a level you give and it's just ordinary. Nothing changes. Nothing changes. The other day, for purposes of time, there was this other lady here. Rich and settled in life. But the needs, nothing that riches she has can ever happen to. And she was a giver too. But let me show you the levels of giving. You can make a choice. Levels of giving. The Bible is so clear from the book of 2 Kings in chapter 4. Talk about one rich woman by the name we know her as the Shunammite woman. We don't know how, how, whether she's Jane or uh, Alice, we are not told. They just say the Shunammite woman. She was great in James English. Others say rich, great woman. And she has moved from the realm of principles, just proving that I love God, I go to church, I go to all the programs in church. She is full of the spirit. And men of God pass through the place. And there's a one among them who is called Elisha. Elisha passes by there too and she gives to them food and she makes their life refreshed and they do a good job. And then a time comes, she, full of the Holy Ghost, checks out on the men of God that come into their church. Discovers this particular one is a holy, genuine man of God. See, this is the one I'm looking for. And she requests her husband, Daddy, Papa, whatever they call her, him. I perceive that this is a genuine man of God. Let us demonstrate our love for God much more. 
by building him a house on top of this that we have, that he may come when he's tired and refresh himself, make a bed, a, a lampstand, a, a, a lampstand there, and a table and a chair, and let him just be comfortable. Listen, she gave to the work of God out of love and served that servant of God. But listen, and you know, I'm sure you know, jo, I mean, you know Elijah and you know Elisha. They are no cheap, cheap men. Tough and with the toughness of the Old Testament prophet, my friend. They are not moved easily. But this particular one, his, not the Shunammite woman, but the giving inside her touched heaven. And heaven is troubling Elisha. And Elisha says, what can we do for this woman? They don't give this kind of giving and you leave them alone. Hello? I said, hallelujah. Whatever moved God in the days of Elisha, I mean Solomon, is now happening to this woman right now. And Elisha says, okay, okay. I think I know the governor, the senator, and the MPs, we can talk about Basari in case she has a problem with school fees. Uh -huh. Or maybe she wants to do some business with the county government. We talk so that they can give her a, a contract. Can build some roads and get some millions. This is a good woman of God. While he's celebrating that, the woman said, mm -hmm. I am living among my own people. All the people in government are my people. <laughs> we are friends. We have no issue with that. So, in fact, we just have enough. We're not looking for contracts. What we have is correct. And then he did stop there. So he goes to disturb Gehazi. Gehazi, Gehazi. What shall we do for this woman? That is, there can't be. They can't bless you like that. It can't be. It can't be. It can't be. And revelation comes. God comes with an answer. I say, by the way, she doesn't have a baby. Unfortunately, the husband is very old. So expecting anything in this home is not easy. Say, so, okay. The anointing on my life is stirred up like the one that Isaac had when the venison arrived. And the giving is the one troubling this particular servant of God. It is nothing to do with the Shunammite woman. It has nothing to do with the house. It has to do with her love for God that has been demonstrated with her giving. And her giving has reached those levels that move God. Hallelujah. I say hallelujah. Are we together? Her giving moved God to trouble Elisha. As she gave, Elisha prayed over her. She got the miracle child that you know. And many years later, the child dies. And I love the way she's so spiritual. She doesn't bother the husband who doesn't have discernment. The man is just good that he's not bad. He's good because he's not, but he's not spiritual. When the child is six, I'm a mayako and 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 I'm a she called the husband and said, hey, Daddy, give me one sermon there with a donkey to take me to where the man of God is stationed at this particular time. And uh, the husband is asking, by the way, it is not new moon, as they call it. It's not a new month. Because we normally go to give him things regularly at least once in a month. This is not the time that we visit there. What's the matter? And what did she say? Peace. Don't mind. That is beyond you now. If we get to argue here, I say, hey, that's dead. Let's bury <laughs> But I know something more than burying this one. God gave, God can keep, can keep, bring to life. And they go. And you know what happened? Elisha, by the same God's grace that brought about the miracle child, the glory of her giving is still speaking for her days later because of that singular act that brought in the covenant with God. Hallelujah. The Bible says, Amen. Of course, you know the story to cut it short. The child was resurrected from the dead. Is that okay? The glory continues speaking again. The man of God has seen ahead in chapter 8 and verse 1. 
and say, well, you woman, you are giving stars me to speak to you a prophetic truth. Next year, there's going to be a famine in this land. Few people will escape. I don't want you to suffer. Seven solid years, there's going to be famine in the land. Elisha didn't tell anybody else. Told this woman only. She carried her own things and went to the Philistine land for seven years. In verse 5. Now the king had called Gehazi to ask about the exploits of, of Elisha. He said, Elisha. He said, there was a woman that this uh, Elisha raised her child from the dead. She was barren. The husband was old. And this Elisha man you see, he's a great man of God. God has used him in this country. Great. Okay. While they were speaking, the woman appeared. I say, hey, Mr. King, I left this country in the days of famine and I've returned back and somebody has cultivated my land and there's nothing I can do. I said, and the guy said, this is the woman. This is the woman that I was talking about. And she was restored to her all that had been taken from her. Most likely, somebody has kept her farm very well and she's just coming for a reaping of what she never labored for because of the glory of God. Beloved, we cannot exhaust how much giving is and can do for us. But most importantly, we must be able to the Macedonian church. The Bible says they first give themselves to God. Hallelujah. Giving without loving God is barren. But giving out of love, that you, you are all out to prove, to prove, to prove that Jehovah, I love you. Hallelujah. I love you. You will not be waiting for the church. To, this church is dangerous. It is so organized that if you are not careful, you can just become, even if you don't give offering. Nowadays, we have this uh, mutandao. So you can just stay there. You cannot be blessed that way. You can never. Of course, who knows? Whether I'm, well, I was also pressing. You know, I was, maybe I was uh, talking to my darling wife. How is service, dear? And maybe you are thinking that I'm darling... 933948. Three, three, I've even crammed it. <laughs> Hello? <laughs> Hallelujah. It's dangerous to be here if you don't know how to love God. You can pass by this place and people see you and wonder, no, can send me a coyote. And you'll be cheating. We are waiting on the Lord. Waiting on the Lord without loving the Lord is wasting away. Hello? Saying I'm waiting on the Lord and you are not loving the Lord good enough is wasting your life without knowing and I've come to tell you you can change. Hello? You can do what? Giving out of love for God sends your seed on a mission that is greater than what you know and it is to settle a need in your life which you cannot settle in any other way. The woman has money and she's rich. She even has a problem that she has given up on. But her giving out of love by spirit revelation, by discernment, there is a giving that speaks for you when you're not even there. We read from the book of, from the book of uh, Hebrews chapter 11, and verse 3 and 4, that even though Abel is dead, her, his sacrifice speaks on his behalf. Let me tell you something. That's very explosive. That I go from the Holy Ghost. Let me digress, like Kidogo, but the same point anyway. Why did God say, honor your father and your mother? Let me be go well with you. Why? Is there an explanation or is it just a, a commandment cast on the stone of Moses' pup? <laughs> it's just written, you'll just honor. No, it has an explanation. Every sacrifice your parents did when you were a baby, they protect from mosquito bite every falling down in your life and you are doing things that would have killed you and they kept protecting you. It is that which they did for you that if you don't honor, troubles you. They must not say anything bad. Hello? They must not say anything? No, they don't need. You are in a city of Eldoret and you are eating turkey with your friends who are with in school and prove them you are the manager, the big man in town. And your mama and papa are begging a borrowing in the village, they are abusing them. So when they call you, say, I'll talk to daddy. Just give me some time. 
Niko busy sana siku hizi dadi. Pesa kuna uone mafuta imesubua. Kila mtu anateseka hapa tu hata gari haiendi and you are driving towards one place. Hello? It does not require him even if he was to bless you like what he can enter. The sacrifice speaks. Hallelujah. On their behalf whether good or bad. Hallelujah. Let me tell you. There is nothing the devil can do to stop the church of Jesus. Because the sacrifice of Calvary speaks on behalf of Jesus in his absence. Hello? He may not need to be here. But what he did at Calvary speaks for him. If the one of Abel speaks for him, and the one of Abraham speaks for him, and the one of uh, uh, Solomon speaks for him, and the other woman also speaks for her, the one for Jesus is stronger forever. That's why we have the dark ages. The devil has tried all he can do. He can never push the church to a corner. We are like the Israelites of the uh, Exodus chapter 1 verse 12. The more they constricted them and, and harassed them and oppressed them, the more they grew. Do you know this is, don't make noise with that word. I would have used it, but I should. Let me be more civil. This uh, Russia that is stabbing people with all manner of wickedness. Hello? Is the fourth largest country with the Christians on the earth. The more they behave like they are the devil's agent, the, the, the antichrist, the more Christ is in the place. China is not missing on the top number of Christians on the earth. And India. Hallelujah. America is busy exporting all these homosexual and all this nonsense. Yet they lead on earth of Christians. You can't squeeze whatever Jesus did. Is so strong, you too can follow him. Hallelujah. You can change your story. You can change your life. Any day, anywhere. Demonstrate your love. Demonstrate your love for God. Change your giving. Change, in fact, with the, I'm, let me be very honest, I'm practical. The kind of thing I see here and there doesn't reflect anybody here. Don't kill your own life. At least, God is my witness, I'm on an altar. God knows. I don't beg, I don't borrow. I have proved love for God in my own small way. And I'm comfortable this way that I say, even if Christ was not to come, he came and there's no heaven. I say, ah, the way I live with you, Jesus, is good enough. Let them increase the fuel on the pump. I'll see come driving here. Or fly. Without asking, Pastor, can, I, can you send me a ticket? I will come with my ticket. Hello? I say, hallelujah. God is real. And love makes our relationship so exciting. E examine your giving. Demonstrate it. There's no drama about it. You know? And they say anybody can give. What, did they say you give Kidogo? It is because you love Kidogo that you feel comfortable. They say anybody can. There's a trap there, yeah. But you have been a Christian for long and nothing is changing. Is it that God is uh, favoring others? Is your giving life that is betraying you? You are proving forever you don't love him. What should he do with you? He cannot change his own word. Your glory is dependent on the light you carry. The light is in the word. The word is we are preaching now. Correct me if I'm not in the scripture. Hello? I say hallelujah. Many don't like life. The most difficult message to preach is the message of love. If we talk about, I begin to prophesy. Say, you, tomorrow, three buses are coming. And you prove this my handkerchief here. It's anointed for being a billionaire. The first one to catch it. Catch it, catch it. You come a billionaire, catch it, catch it. People will flood here. Lazy people. Careless people. Who run for cheap, cheap miracles. Let me tell you, we tell it in this commission. In this, in this hour, Hello? So I forgot counting. You let me know the time. Five minutes to go. Hallelujah. Oh, I'm past time. God bless everybody in Jesus' name.